Hello everyone, this is Coder2j. In this video, I will guide you through the process of building an asset graph, incorporating multiple assets, and managing their dependencies. Sounds excited? Let's get started. In the previous video, we explored the process of creating a Dagster asset. Using the same approach, we can easily create additional assets. For instance, Let's create a second asset by applying that asset decorator and name it my underscore second underscore asset. Then we can provide a description such as this is my second asset. Next, let's create a list named data with elements 4, 5, 6 and return it. To include a log message, we need first to add the context parameter and send a message like output data is data. Now, let's use the Dagster dev command to launch the Dagster web server. Let's go to the browser and navigate to the URL localhost, 3000. Boom! In the lineage view, we'll notice two independent assets, my underscore first underscore asset and my underscore second underscore asset. We can materialize each of them independently by selecting the asset and clicking the materialize selected button. Once the run completes, we can review the logs for further insights. What if I want to add some dependencies to my assets? For instance, running the second asset only after the completion of the first asset. Absolutely yes. Dagster provides a straightforward way to define asset dependencies. Let's go back to VS Code to implement this. To make our second asset depends on the first asset, we can simply add a parameter called depths to the asset decorator of my underscore second underscore asset. The value of this parameter should be a list, allowing us to include multiple dependencies if needed. In this case, we only require a dependency on my underscore first underscore asset, so the value should be a list with a single element, which is my underscore first underscore asset. Save the Python file, we then go back to the browser. To incorporate the updated assets, we can click the reload code location button. Boom! My underscore second underscore asset is now visibly dependent on my underscore first underscore asset in the lineage view. Furthermore, a notification within my underscore second underscore asset alerts us to this recent dependency change since the last materialization. Given this new dependency relationship, attempting to materialize my underscore second underscore asset without first materializing my underscore first underscore asset prompts a warning. It reminds us that the upstream asset, my underscore first underscore asset, has yet to be materialized. Therefore, it's essential to materialize the upstream asset before proceeding to the downstream asset. Execute the materialization process in the correct order. Begin with my underscore first underscore asset and then proceed to materialize my underscore second underscore asset. Following this sequence ensures a seamless process without any warnings. Despite the existing dependency, you might find that the data in the two assets are currently unrelated. If we wish to utilize the return value from the first asset in the second asset, Dagster provides a straightforward method to achieve this. Simply specify the upstream asset key name as a parameter for the downstream asset. In this case, we need to remove the depth parameter and add my underscore first underscore asset as a parameter for my underscore second underscore asset. Given that my underscore first underscore asset returns a list, import the list from the typing module and incorporate typing accordingly. Then we can append our list to it. As a result, the return value of my underscore second underscore asset should be a list containing six elements, ranging from one to six. Upon saving the Python file, then we go back to the browser and effortlessly retrieve the latest asset file by clicking the reload location button. Ops, we had an error, which has been marked by a triangle warning sign next to deployment. Click on the view error button for a detailed stack trace. While the stack trace might not offer an immediate solution, it highlights an essential Dagster convention, ensure that upstream parameters are placed after the context parameter. Let's go back to the VS code to fix that. Save the Python file, we then go back to the browser to reload the code location again. Boom! Now it loads successfully. Let's materialize it one by one. 
check the log of my second asset materialization run, we can see that Dagster helps us load the my underscore first underscore asset return value using the default input manager aisle underscore manager. The output data of my underscore second underscore asset is one, two, three, four, five, six. That's awesome. If you find the current way of defining dependencies a bit too implicit, Dagster also offers an explicit dependency definition. Let's go back to VS Code to implement this approach. To achieve this, we need to set a parameter called ins in the asset decorator. Ins accepts a mapping type of value, consisting of a string key and an asset in object. Let's name the key upstream and import the asset in module. Then we create an asset in object with the asset key of my first asset, which is my underscore first underscore asset. At the same time, we need to update the parameter name to the key we set for the ins parameter, which is upstream. This explicit definition offers a more transparent and structured way of specifying dependencies between assets. Save the Python file and go back to the browser. Then we update the assets by clicking the Reload Code Location button. Let's materialize the assets one by one. In the log of the materialization run of my second asset, we can see the explicit dependency definition works as expected. With the same method, we can create multiple upstream dependencies. For example, let's create a third asset called my underscore third underscore asset, which depends on both my first and second asset. In the asset decorator, we need to set the value of the ends parameter to be a dictionary with two key value pairs. The first element has the key of first underscore upstream and the value of the asset and object with the asset key of my underscore first underscore asset. The second has the key of second underscore upstream with the value of asset and object with the asset key of my underscore second underscore asset. Then we can add those two parameters to the asset function followed by the context parameter. Within the function body, we can create a variable called data containing the output of both my first and second assets. Then, append a list to the output of the second asset, incorporating it as the output of the third asset. Now, save the Python file. Then we can go back to the browser to update the asset. Boom! We see my underscore third underscore asset now depends on both my underscore first underscore asset and my underscore second underscore asset. To validate this dependency, let's trigger a materialization run for it. Upon completion, we can check the log to find the data variable, which showcases the output of all three assets. By default, Dagster uses the asset function name as the asset key. However, customization can be easily achieved by assigning a personalized asset key to the asset decorator. For instance, let's set the asset key of my underscore first underscore asset to my underscore awesome underscore first underscore asset. It's crucial to update any references to this asset key accordingly. Upon saving the Python file, return to the browser and update the asset by clicking the reload code location button. Boom! The asset key for our first asset is now successfully updated to reflect the customization. You may have noticed that all our assets are currently grouped under the default group. Customizing this is just as straightforward. Return to VS Code and set the group name of our first asset to get underscore started. After making this change, click the reload button to update the asset. We see the asset graph changes in the lineage view and the get underscore started asset group immediately appears. If it doesn't appear, we need to click the reload button on the bottom left. Now, all the latest asset groups are neatly organized under the hellodagster.py file. We can see our asset dependencies are still valid even though they are under different asset groups. Let's use the same way to bring all the assets into the group get underscore started. What we need to do is to set the group underscore name to get underscore started for all the assets. Upon saving the Python file, return to the browser to reload. Boom! Now, we have a single asset group get underscore started, comprising all three assets. We can leverage this customization feature to have more descriptive asset keys 
and organize assets as needed, enhancing clarity and organization within your Dagster environment. That's it. You've learned how to build an asset graph, incorporating multiple assets and managing their dependencies. Additionally, you've gained insights into customizing assets to make your assets more organized. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing and giving it a thumbs up. Feel free to let us know what topics you'd like to see covered in the next video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.